Hi everybody, thank you for watching my video on physics. In this video, we shall discuss the change of state of matter, also called phase change. In particular, we shall use water as an example. As you have already learned before, there are three states of matter, solid, liquid and gas. How do you distinguish between them? Probably you have the answer. Yes, we distinguish between them by their shape and volume. Look at the table. A solid object has a fixed shape and a fixed volume. Examples are rocks, chairs, tables, and books, etc. Liquid does not have a fixed shape, but it has a fixed volume. The shape of a liquid varies with the container. On the other hand, a standard can of Coca-Cola has a volume of 355 milliliter. Once the can is sealed, its volume will remain unchanged. Of course, it may expand slightly as temperature increases. Gas has no fixed shape nor fixed volume. For example, inside a diesel engine, the air can be compressed to only 10% of its original volume before fuel is injected. Let's talk about water. Solid water is called ice. In liquid state, it is called water. In gaseous state, we call it steam or water vapor. A change from solid to liquid is called melting or fusion. A change from liquid to gas is called vaporization. When this occurs at boiling point, the process is called boiling. When this occurs below boiling point, the process is called evaporation. A change from gas to liquid is called condensation. A change from liquid to solid is called freezing or solidification. Do not use the term liquefaction to describe melting or condensation because it is confusing. A change from solid to gas directly is called sublimation. A piece of dry ice placed in air will disappear after a while. The solid carbon dioxide changes into carbon dioxide gas directly without the need to go through the liquid state. A change from gas to solid directly is called deposition. An example of deposition is the process by which in subfreezing air, water vapor changes directly to ice without first becoming a liquid. This is how slopes are formed in clouds, as well as the folds that form on the ground or the side wall of a refrigerator. It is important to note that water vapor is invisible. We must learn to interpret this diagram correctly. The white mist that appear above the boiling water and the hot drink are not steam nor water vapor because they are invisible. What is visible to us is the small water drops that reflect light into our eyes. Water vapor and steam do not reflect light, so they are invisible. The mist are formed after water vapor condenses into small liquid water drops. To reiterate that mist are not water vapor, I'm going to show you an experiment. The apparatus used includes an outer sun emitter and a glass of water. When the ultrasound emitter is immersed into the water and turned on, these are formed. Note that the water is not boiling and no water vapor is produced. The mists are simply tiny water drops produced by the vibration of the ultrasound emitter. We know that air consists of water vapor. For example, humidity is often mentioned in weather reports to tell us the relative amount of water vapor in air. Can you prove experimentally that there is water vapor in air? The simple answer to this question is that water drops will form on the surface of a can of cold soft drink. The water drops are resulted from condensation of water vapor in air. When water vapor is cooled, it will condense into liquid water. In the following experiment, you will see how water vapor condenses into water drops directly. The apparatus includes a clear glass of hot water, ice in a plastic bag and a match. Due to evaporation, the air above the hot water consists of large amount of water vapor. The water vapor tends to condense into liquid water, but the clean air slows down the condensation. Therefore, the result is difficult to observe. However, when we add some smoke inside by an extinguished match, the water vapor will condense more quickly. This enables us to see the formation of mist more easily. This experiment demonstrates the formation of clouds in air. Perhaps you have fun with dry ice before. When dry ice is dropped into hot water, bubbles are formed and a lot of mist will be produced. On the other hand, mist is formed above hot drinks. Question 1. What are the difference between the mist above dry ice and the mist above hot drinks? Question 2. While mist can be produced by very hot and very cold objects, mist do not appear above objects at warm temperature. 
Can you explain this phenomenon? Be the first to write your answer in the comments below. You are welcome to comment on the answers of other people. I shall give my answer to these questions in the coming video. In summary, you have learned basic terminology that describe the change of state of matter, including melting, fusion, vaporization, condensation, freezing, sublimation, and deposition. You have also learned how to distinguish between mist and steam, and how to interpret a diagram showing steam correctly. I hope this video can help you understand more about phase change. Thank you for watching.